Big Boys Big Neighborhood. Boy. All righty, man. It got real talented up in man. here. And I'm just going to say it got sexy er up in here because it was already sexy before you walked in. Oh, Michael yeah, Ely yeah. in the neighborhood. Uh-huh. <laughs> Michael Ely, it was already, we we were holding down the sexy Louie and for, I. For a long time. Man. And then when True. you walked in, you just put an er to it. I, sexy I, er. Just an extra yeah, er. Man. Yeah, man. You ain't nothing. I appreciate it, man. Yeah. Thank you, man. Hey, Tear man. me down and make yourself feel bad. Thank you. You knew exactly Understood. what I was doing. I totally So understand. this happens to you all the time then? Oh, yeah, all the time. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, all righty, yeah. cool. Yeah, man, I, get it. I thought that it was just, I thought the salt was just me. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? Look, look, whatever I got to do to make you get through your day. Thank you, know you bro. I, I want you to have good self-esteem. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Thank you. It's not going to work as much, but I take that. <laughs> okay. You know, but no, I Michael Ely, okay. extremely talented, bro. And yeah, you man. one of those people, Michael Ely, when you play a role, it, of course we look and say that's Michael Ely, mm-hmm. but you get so into character. And of course, when you come on the first thing, when they first show you, you're like, oh, oh my God, oh my God. You know, but Michael once he gets past that, and once I stop saying, oh, oh my God, oh my God, there you go. Then when the, when you start seeing the acting, first off, Michael E., did you always know you wanted to be an actor? Did you did that bite you early on? Um, no. No? Nah. No, no. I, I wanted to be an architect. Really? Oh, wow. yeah. So were you going to school for it, or was that just in your mind, I want to be an architect? No, I was I was I was actually taking architecture classes in high school and entering like architecture competition state oh, wow. like, stuff like in that. Yeah, I was doing in high school. Wow. <laughs> right, in high school. So um that was that was cool and then when I started like applying to colleges, I realized how difficult that curriculum was mm-hmm. long term and I'm not a math science. Right. Um, so it wasn't it wasn't long. Like, so had you acted before like anything in high in high school or elementary? Um, I played the really. tree when I was in elementary, fifth grade. Yeah, you know right. what I'm saying? And I was in what? choir what? the same year. Woo, so it was like, right. boom, tree, Told boom, him. now I got to sing. Also, hey. you know, it's a double, dip, double, double duty, we called it in. You played a tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nowadays, it'd probably be considered racism. Did you have a line or no? Were you like Groot or no? <laughs> uh, you know what, man? As a matter I'm of fact, uh, now that you think about it, yeah, I didn't you have a line. Before? <laughs> you were yeah. before yeah. Groot yeah. that from you. Yeah, I was, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I was yeah. like, hey, you know what I'm saying? Uh, like, just, but but that we're not here to talk about my early work. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? So when does the acting bug hit Michael Ely? 19. Really? How? 19. How? Yeah, how does that so, start? Okay, so two of my uh, best friends uh, from high school had... Uh, made a film um, right after we graduated high school. And I saw it and I said, you know what, look, I could do a better job and I'm mm-hmm. not even an actor. So mm. just let me know the next time you guys are making a movie. Wow. And they were like, all right, we're going to do one next summer. I was like, all right, cool. Everybody was in college, so we, we got back together in the summer like well, while everybody was on break. And we made this movie and... I had to audition, which was funny. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> Do you have to audition for the role? All right, yeah. And you are like, man, it's me, yeah. Mike, man. Yeah. I was like, Tim from around the corner. Yeah. 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 I was like, All right, well, let's you gotta see what work happens. For it. So they made me work for it. Wait, so, so you auditioned? Did I did you get the audition. Part? I got the part. Wow. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's why I'm here today. Yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I did that. And then um, when I shot that movie, I honestly felt that moment of clarity, mm. that connection, mm. you know what I mean? That feel of like, that's the aha. Ah, oh, I could, I could, I could really do this like for a long time. And you really did it though, and continue to do it. What about the guys that did the the movie with you? Where are they now? Uh, one of them is uh, just got back from Morocco. He just directed an episode of Homeland. There oh, wow. it is. And the other one got into tech. So See? They doing well. Everybody's doing well. Yeah. Everybody's okay, doing well. Yeah. cool. Yeah. They can like, leave them behind. When I yeah. asked the question, I almost got scared. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, like, yeah, damn, yeah. do I want to hear it? But what it's good that you came up with a fake answer. So that's always, <laughs> yeah. that's good always good. An yeah, it's always good to have a positive answer. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, yeah. You know, but. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. The Intruder. Mm. Now, when you do a movie like The Intruder, now mm-hmm. now, now we, we see movies, it's like, that's Michael Ely. Anything that they can't get Michael Ely for, then they'll, they'll look for a Michael Ely type. And then we have, you know, executive producer produced by. So, so there are credits. What is your relationship with The Intruder? Do you still have to audition today? I do. I did not for this movie. Okay. There are roles that I have to still audition for. Mm -hmm. Um, This one was offered to me. Uh, This was an independent film. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, everybody who's called you to to be there. Um, The realism. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we're at a point now where we're kind of convinced to live vicariously through superheroes and, you know, uh, dragons and stuff. You know what I mean? So, 
for me, this was a nice, simple story about a couple that I could see myself. Yeah. Right. So like Megan Good's character and me, I think they're very real, very grounded mm-hmm. people, you know, and, and people when they go out to see this movie on date night, they'll actually see themselves. Right. Because we show both the good and the bad yeah. that's going on with this couple, which is pretty accurate. And so, you know, you see that and you realize, OK, they're in a real life and death scenario but they were just like me so it begs the question what would i do mm. and that's what happens mm-hmm. i think when people start yelling at the screen yeah that's what natalia oh. was saying <laughs> just the people yelling at, and you want a yell at the screen movie yeah you know what i'm saying like oh my don't do it mm-hmm. don't do it you know in, in the pocket you know what i'm saying not eating cheerios and everything yeah. but yeah. yeah in the pocket when it's right but it's crazy because people when you're when you're when you're an audience member you don't realize this but you're yelling because you have more information mm-hmm. than the character. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know that's saying? true. Yeah. That is true because they've right. seen it. Like, yeah. oh, my God. Oh, no, no, don't, don't go that way because yeah. you know what's on the other So that makes he perfect in there. sense. Yeah. yeah. They don't know that. Like, like, he don't even know it was his best friend that broke in his house. Like, right. Yeah. So, like, in the in the vein of, like, a hand that rocks the cradle or a fatal mm-hmm. attraction or something like that, that's, that's kind of what this movie is. It's a throwback to one of those. When you read the script, did you know, like, like every turn of the page, like oh, okay, yeah, I, I need to get this one. This this one's it. S- to a certain extent, like I, I had the luxury of reading it, knowing that Megan and Dennis were involved. Wow. Right, so I read it with interest, meaning I I wanted to work or the opportunity to work with someone like Dennis Quaid mm-hmm. and Megan and I have done two other projects together, but we never had a scene. Funny. We never spoke yeah. to each other in the movie. And now you guys are a married couple. Now we're like a married <laughs> couple. So it was it was it was kind of I read it with interest is what I would say. Is, and so it was simple and I love that part of it. Is Dennis did Dennis stay in the creepy mode or like that kind of on set or he was just like cuz now I'm like fully af- afraid of Dennis Quaid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, but that means yeah. he played a, he did a hell of a yeah. job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, everybody will be afraid of Dennis Quaid after seeing this movie and I don't know if anybody's going to buy insurance after this. But <laughs> uh, I do believe that like he he has the ability and this is again this is a pro. He's been doing this over 40 years. Yes sir. Yeah. And he's only 31, years. so figure that out. <laughs> Good genes. <laughs> yeah. So he um he he would just do a scene and then he would just like like bug out like he could just go work on his golf swing pick up the guitar start playing you know he's a total musician because you know mm. that michael ely there said there's some people they always stay in character and, method and they got yeah method yeah. acting you got to walk around you got to call him by the character name so once he got out he was out yeah he said that you know he he used to be that guy right. he did it when he played jerry lee lewis mm-hmm. in great balls of fire and he said it led to rehab. Really? So, <laughs> so he, he went like, that far in. Yeah, wow. He was like, I, I, I you know, I got married his cousin and everything. Learn <laughs> <laughs> like, man, like, you know, you learn to, to step far away. In. You know what I mean? And how nothing acting can get you in trouble. How do you, you know? prepare for a role? Depends on the role, obviously. You know, um, if it's a, if it's a, um, like a period piece, mm-hmm. then what I'll do is I'll listen to music from that that period. Mm-hmm. I'll I'll read books from that period. I'll look at art from that period. Do everything I can to try and form the culture mm-hmm. of that time period, and 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 that all helps just kind of get you in that zone. Um, for other movies, like when I played uh, Carter in the uh, Perfect Guy, mm-hmm. um, you know, I just had to suck toothbrushes and stuff like that. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, your wife wake up like, <laughs> like baby, what the what? hell? Like I was sucking your. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm oh, joking. Okay, I'm like... totally joking. I just did a lot of research on sociopaths. And what did just you? what what they actually are. What? Does that scare your wife how deep you can go when it don't look like you're acting? She's like, wait, who, do, who are you? Wait, huh? Uh, you know why? Because my wife knows me. Maybe she so, doesn't, Mike. No, right. You know she, does. No, okay, she does. Okay, gotcha. My wife will be the first one to be like in the middle of, you know, an argument. Um, this is not a scene. <laughs> oh, oh, damn, oh that's she know how to call you home. Yeah. And I'll be like this. You start going, I'm, I'm not acting. Yeah. I, and then this you feel like you're yeah. acting. Yeah. You know? Oh my God. Instantly you feel like is you're acting. Is acting easy for you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's because it's something I'm passionate about. I'm sure, like, 
I'm watching what you guys do, and I'm like, this this is hard. Like, yeah. I, if, if I was here, I'd be hey, like, hey, dude, our boss is about to walk in. When he walk in, re- say that same line again. That this is hard because I don't want him to think that this is <laughs> this is hard. Like, this we don't is, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I, I'd feel bad if I miss neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, I'd yeah. I feel bad if I miss saying that. Ah, oh, don't worry about it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, feel no, bad. You know we what? Do. You you do what you do. Yeah, man. You know okay, what I'm saying? Yeah, and exactly. we'll continue to do what we, we do. got lane. They, and I'll stay in mine. All right. You know, I have put on my blinker and came into your lane before. Yeah, man. Tell them. But then they just get me right back out of it. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Right, Go ahead, right. Ide. What's the hardest role that you've ever taken on? Maybe challenged you in a different way that other characters hadn't? Uh, for colored girls. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd probably say for colored girls because that was like um, playing. I put on 35 mm. pounds mm-hmm. and uh, playing a character who is suffering from PTSD, you know, after coming back from the war, Mm -hmm. who used to be, you know, just as normal as us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when he came back, he was never the same. And the effect that that has on your family and to be able to take your own children and put them out the window, Mm -hmm. you know, and drop them Mm -hmm. was probably one of the hardest things I ever had to do. Mm -hmm. Um, Just to be able to find a way to go there. How do you unpack after playing a role like that? Tequila. Oh, oh tequila. Okay. Yeah, my guy. Yeah. <laughs> He's a tequila. Said, Lots of tequila. How did you take the 35 pounds off? Oh, God, that was hard. I had to go. Um, it's funny because I left that job and went straight to the good wife. So oh, okay. I, was, mm. I literally had to. Oh, so you had yeah. to. Yeah. yeah I, was there anyone that saw you, didn't know you were shooting a movie, and be like, girl, I saw him. He. <laughs> Uh, you know, he's letting himself go. Oh, damn. Like, oh, the yeah. way that he was all him. fat. And, you know. you should have seen him exactly. in real life. Or do you have to walk in a room and explain yourself? Like, yeah, I'm doing this movie. You know? yeah. <laughs> I actually went to Essence Festival. Oh, <laughs> man. I went to Essence Festival. And, and you like, know at Essence Festival, when they looking dude, for you, they like, Mike. I had, I had like a, a full <laughs> beard, wild hair, and I was just like 200 and something pounds. Wow. And they were just like. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he done yeah. fell off. Yeah, he done lost it. Yeah, yeah man. Oh Looking God. at you, but don't want to say anything. Yeah, it was it was bad. I had tattoos from the movie and stuff. Be like, and look at this like, old swollen what, Michael E. Looking. Him, no, right? that's him, girl. Don't look at him. And it'd be just like the shade room to put a smash or pass. Uh-huh. Right? Not now. Then right. they gotta take it all back. Ten years hit him hard. Yeah, You know what I'm saying? Like he thinking like a fat man now. Michael Ely at one point. You probably don't know this, but um, I had a silent boycott on you. Oh, okay. Really? Yeah, I had a silent boycott. Why? It, was, it was everywhere. It wasn't silent. even a boycott. I was okay. really tripping. It was more of a man cot. Okay. Where it was like bigger than a boycott. It was Can like. You explain this, please. Yeah, please. Why? My wife. <laughs> you said bigger mm-hmm. than a boycott. Man-cot. My wife yes. loves me, mm-hmm. but she like Michael Ely is the crush. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So even yesterday, I was like, baby, I said I got your crush in. Tomorrow, and you know, I don't put, I don't set it up where it's like you still the crush, but I don't say so many things about you in the past, like <laughs> he smells bad. He got you know fat. what I'm saying? Yeah, like, like baby, have I you ever smelled? Have, sm- sm- <laughs> have you ever smelled his breath? Like, yeah, you know, he's prone to get fat. You he's know what I'm saying? Contacts. Yeah, yeah. Oh, in the contacts. Oh, mm. she believed that one for years. <laughs> Good. How long? But Good. you've been wearing contacts for like your whole, like your whole career. Huh? Yeah, I, I started when I was 15. Mm. I heard that. So just put the colored contacts in, and now you like married to it. Look at me now. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Now you can't. You know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. there it is, bro. Yeah, you want to be taking them out now? No, 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 no. Please okay. keep it, keep keep it in, man. I don't want you to, you know, if you're comfortable, and I want you to be comfortable when you come to the neighborhood, yeah. even though you're making me uncomfortable. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> do you get that a lot, where men to tell you you're my wife's crush? You're, you know what I'm saying? You're the hall pass. Yeah, yeah. Well, I ain't gonna say all that okay. shit. <laughs> but, uh, we ain't taking it that far. Yeah, we just say we just say crush. You, no can be, you, can, yeah, you can be in third grade yeah. with a crush. You know what I'm saying? Ain't gonna be no passes. I feel you. Um. Yes. Mm-hmm. But to me, like to assert, like people always assume that women are worse. Women are falling all over me and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And, and it's, it's not like right. that, really. Um, guys can be worse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Guys, more men? Guys can be worse. Like hitting Or like they throw them? No, they're not no, hitting just, uh, They but give too much. their partners? They're like, oh, oh. I got. I gotta get this picture from my, my, my girl. Uh, my girl loves you. I gotta get this picture. Come on, man. Come on, man. I did that to you at the theater. I did that to you. I think right. the Chris Brown screening. But it's yeah. But I mean, it's like guys will like like you'll see me with my kids mm-hmm. and be like you know yo 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 my man can mm-hmm. I yo you my wife loves you like you don't understand. Like, homie, hold the baby. You. Hold the baby. You know what I mean? And it's like yeah, all right. 
Just, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. oh, okay. You know what I mean? And and it's like guys will be the ones who see you coming down the street and you could be in full disguise and they're like, Yeah. Mm, that's Man. him. That's him. What up, Mike? Stop. Yeah. Stop everything they're doing <laughs> yeah. to wow. follow you. I've had people follow me. That's crazy. And it's scary? like, and it's like, dude, I can see you over there, man. What, yeah, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? yeah. <laughs> or or have you had the people that do the secret recordings? Oh yeah, like the the hip recordings. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Restaurants, they got their phone like this. Yeah, right man. There. It's yeah. I, and I'm gonna tell you, man. It, and it's <laughs> not it us. It's invasive. Yeah, and it's not us being conceited. You know what I'm saying? Us being just you know two handsome men in here. Mm-hmm. Um. <laughs> Uh, it just comes. Why'd you did you laugh, laugh? Michael? Did you laugh? No. I just, I just, you are handsome. I was, there's three. Come uh, on. Well, I, I'm not gonna no, send it no, all the way around the room <laughs> because some of them, some of them, we Don't just have to throw to in just you because. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. so let, okay. let, let's just keep it here with the real handsome men. Um, sometimes, dude, I do want to walk into a room and just be the guy in the room. Mm. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I don't want to always walk in and be like eye candy. Yeah. Thank you, bro. You meat. know what I'm saying? Eye candy. Mm. Uh, piece of meat. You look a good piece in of person. Meat. What yeah. do you do to keep yourself ground? Not, not like, even grounded, like, but like, like normal. You know what? This is what I do, and this has been working for me. Okay. I walk in and I look like this now. <laughs> so when I walk in and I look like this, nobody wants this. What is looking like this? Exactly. Just this. You know what I'm huh. saying? Just when you, when you look at me, you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Ugh. You this, know what I'm saying? This is your normal look. Yeah. yeah. So this is me like toning it down, mm. where I'm mm-hmm. like. You know, so now it's not about how sexy I am. Now it's just right. about my talent. Yes. Because right. I've worked on looking like this. Like, mm. you know, uh, you know what I'm saying? Just yeah. like that. It's about your well, voice. Let, let, let's unpack that a little bit. Okay, please. Okay, and I think it's important that you don't diminish your light. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't want you to diminish your light. Okay, so, so that other people can feel good. Ah. Uh, I don't want you to do that. Hey. Gotcha. You gotta yeah. keep so, so just keep, yeah, keep, keep shining. shining. Mm-hmm. Keep, keep shining. smiling. Back. For sure. Knowing mm-hmm. you can always count on me. For sure. Uh-huh. Absolutely. That's Beautiful. what friends are for. I mean, look, Dion said it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and she said it best. You know what I'm saying? Speaking sure. on one of your past roles, a lot of fans were really disappointed when you weren't in Barbershop 3. Was that a hard decision to step away and not come back? Uh, No. Hmm. Why? A couple of issues. Um, I had some creative uh, issues with where Ricky was okay. in the script. Mm. Um, and versus where I thought he might be 14 mm-hmm. years later. Also, at the same time, I, I had um, uh, my mom was sick. So oh, I'm wow. so sorry. I had to, I had to go. That, I heard that. That makes it very go. easy to be yeah. able to. That was that made it a lot easier. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do people sometimes easier. in Hollywood not understand? Like, has is the industry sometimes so jaded where they forget? that you are still a person, an actor, and there are going to be reasons that you don't want to do something for personal reasons? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. I mean, it's, it's look, you know, anytime you say no to somebody, they take it personally. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, even though they say they don't, they, they do take it personally. They tend to remember it. Mm-hmm. Um, every now and again, somebody will come back around to you, but... It, it is, it is, it can be a little petty like yeah. that sometimes, yeah. And then I wanted to ask, um, you were in the Halo video with Beyonce. Mm-hmm. Chance the Rapper one time said she smelled like strawberries. What did Beyonce smell like to you? Good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't remember specifically. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so you can't, you can't double down on the strawberries. Yeah, she no. smelled like grapes. I guess can't, I can't, I can't, true. <laughs> no, I, I can't say strawberries, but, um, but I, she did, you know, she did smell good and, she was very, very nice to me. I, I'll never forget that. Was Jay Z off the side like, I see you, Michael? You no, he wasn't there. <laughs> like, don't be yeah, looking at my girl with the mind. He wasn't there, which was even more helpful. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? For me to stay in character. So it was it was it was good. It was a fun that was a fun one. Yeah. That was a fun one. How do you prepare your wife for understanding that you are an actor and you are gonna have these scenes? Because in Intruder, there's a little bit of an in, in, a couple intimate scenes with you and Megan. Yeah, that you, you wrote in. That you, <laughs> no, <sorry. laughs> you requested. <laughs> How do you prepare her to to be understanding and to understand this is a job? You know, I think a lot of that groundwork was laid before we got married. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right? So she knew exactly who I was at the time. Obviously, I had my fair share of sex scenes and, and mm-hmm. so forth before uh, we got married. And she was never, ever insecure mm-hmm. about, um, ab- about that. She yeah. still, to this day, is not insecure. And all of her girlfriends ask her 
all the time. Yeah. Like, how do you deal with that? You know, deal with that. And then, you know, you're in a movie screening with, yeah. with she's got her girlfriends with mm-hmm. her and I'm like making out with, and they're just like cringing. Oh. They can't imagine their man doing that. You they're know, all and mad all, for they're her. They're all <laughs> mad for her. And she's like, listen, he's never given me a reason yeah. to feel like that's I can't secure. trust him. Mm-hmm. That's beautiful. So that that's why she's the wife. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. That's that's you know what I'm it's like it, because, you know, there's a certain amount of respect and understanding yeah. of what it is I do and that it is something I do, mm-hmm. not something I am. Yeah. And ultimately, you know, don't get me wrong. She says many times. You know, when do I get to make out with somebody? <laughs> right, right, right. You know right. I mean? And I'm like, look, as soon like, as you can get paid for like, it. Yeah. Uh, let me I am DB that. you again. <laughs> yeah, you, get, you get paid for it. Hey. Is your wife an is she an actress? No. Well, there it is. Yeah. All right. No. No. What does no. she get to make out with nobody? What's Devon Franklin think? Like, do you guys have like a man to man talk? That's my Are you guys guy. Good? That's my guy. I would you know, it's funny because like, like I've known him before they got married. Yeah. And so I was actually there the day Devon proposed Aww. or was about to propose because I, I was working with mm-hmm. Megan's father on a photo shoot and he came to ask her for her permission. Wow. So I was like, dude, you doing it old school. You doing it right. That's beautiful. <sighs> so beautiful. You know I love what their I mean? relationship. Like, yeah. Like they're, and they're, they're a great couple. They're mad cool. Like he came to set a couple times and you know, like there's, because I know Megan like that, mm-hmm. it's just a lot easier, yeah. you know. And uh, yeah, we he has no problem. I mean, it's probably I'm sure it's probably hard, but at the same time, I mean, if, any, if anybody too, can do it, it. Yeah. anybody can do it. Devon can do oh, okay. it. Yeah, he can do anything. What's the relationship with John Singleton? Okay, uh, so I, I did Too Fast, Too Furious. Mm-hmm. Um, John asked me right after Barbershop mm-hmm. opened to come do that movie, and I. Um, actually had to audition. I had auditioned prior to Barbershop coming out and uh, I didn't get the role that Ludacris got, the role mm. of Ted, which clearly lasted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> clearly. Yeah. You're like, ah. <sighs> so, um, but yeah, he asked me to, I, I read for him, I didn't get it, Barbershop open, uh, and then I got this other role, right, of the Street Racer. And so, but John was very straightforward. He was like, look, I know this didn't work out but this is what I want you to do. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people aren't like that. They aren't straightforward with you. They don't tell you exactly what they're thinking, what they want to do. John was a straight shooter. He, he was unapologetic in that way. Um, that's probably my fondest memory is mm-hmm. that he was just a straightforward guy. I saw him about three months ago at an event honoring Spike Lee. And he, you know, he didn't look well. Right. He didn't yeah. look well, but... I did not anticipate this at all. Same. So I'm Same. I'm like, I'm definitely a bit shook. I Nothing but prayers for his family. I know what it's like to lose a parent. Mm-hmm. And I think that, you know, it's kind of a wake up call, you know, for me to start celebrating people while they're here. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Because he's 51. Yeah. yeah. So he's 51. And, and, and I think we really, Michael Ely, we really doubled down on that even more right. so. Because when we lost Nip, we were also like, you know, the yeah. roses and the flowers while they're here. And I think that that really, that opened up a lot of dialogue. No matter how much certain things hurt, it opened up a lot of dialogue. And, and, it, and it made you say, hey, you know, your vulnerabilities. Get on the phone. Tell somebody you love them. Go mm-hmm. see that person. And then when we lost John as well. You know, and others, many uh-huh. others, you know what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. it really starts to pay more of a tuition into the school of experience where you start to think, OK, got to take care of myself, got to make sure I'm checking in on people, got to, you know, and got to live my life. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, we don't know what tomorrow is. like. We don't know what tonight, you know, so just yeah. just also living your life and, and enjoying you and the people that's around you as well. I think I think that's that's extremely accurate. I've, I've had like a, a tumultuous six years. Right. Mm-hmm. And. In those six years, I've lost both parents and gained two children. Mm. Mm. So it's it's been like kind of like cruel in that way. Yeah. It's kind of been like poetically cruel. You're trying but, to find an emotion. And how old are your kids? Uh, six and two. So did 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 the six year old did did she meet grandma or grandpa? My my son was born mm, four months after my father passed. And my daughter was born 13 months after my mom passed. Um, wow. My son knew his grandmother. Mm-hmm. My my daughter has, yeah. you know, nothing. And see, that's so, where my kids are as well. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, they know their grandmother 
on my wife's side and their mm-hmm. grandfather, but they don't know like grandfather and right. and my my mom, their grandmother on on my side. Yeah. <clears throat> on my side. It, it's one of those things where it's such a life altering experience. It lets you know yeah. that you're getting a little bit older and you're becoming an adult now. Yeah, man. But at the same time, the perspective that you can take from that is 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 powerful because you you start to look at life and what really really matters. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I think before I had kids and lost parents, I I, I was really concerned with career and I was really yeah. driven and focused mm-hmm. and trying to, you know, get certain goals or certain Next level. goal posts. Yeah, like everybody's aiming for a statue mm-hmm. or, yeah. you know, something like, you know, a certain status. And it's like, wow, none of that matters. Yeah, man. None and, of that matters. I just pray to be able to, to stay in this world long enough to watch my kids grow mm-hmm. up. Yeah. Like that's a huge blessing. And I always say, like, even with, with your <clears throat> mother and father passing and the babies coming along, mm-hmm. I always say, man, now you probably got a manager and an agent and this that I say, man, we got the best representative sitting next to God right now. Mm-hmm. And that's the person that say, Hey, you know, give him, you know, this one. Make sure he gets this. You know, we got mm-hmm. somebody that's God willing, somebody that steer and navigate. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. and, and that's our best representative sitting next to, yeah. to God. Two angels up there, two angels down here. There it is, brother. Oh. Believe that. Big boy's Big neighborhood. Boy. Ah, no. Michael oh, Ealy. I'm so sorry. Uh, it's okay. You My didn't get the part for, yeah, for the neighborhood. You're yeah, you have to make it. I'm sorry, no but you don't have the no, time. Yeah, no call back for you. What is this? What is this? I got to get this. Yeah, man. Well, right, well, right when he says it, it, you say it's, it's, yeah, not yeah, it's not your thing. It's not your thing. for it. Yeah, man. You don't yeah, just man. come in here and get this. Yeah, you know what I mean? You didn't make the cut. This guy. Hey, Mike, <laughs> so you you paint as well? Like, artist paint? Or are you a painter? Mm-mm. No? You, what do you do on the side to just... Any are hobbies? there any hobbies or anything? I heard you can paint a really good room, though. Oh, yes. Like Home Depot kind of paint. Yes. Oh, really? Oh. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm like in my in my alternate universe i'm like the best like contractor you could ever oh. yeah like i'm really handy i can like so when you paint say for you paint a room yeah do you tape off and you you oh, do yeah. oh, okay oh, i'm glad you I said that down. because oh, yeah. we're re- remodeling right now yeah. well, i would love to have you come by <laughs> And help hey, us. What you say? I said we're uh-huh. remodeling our home. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, there it is. Wow. Uh-huh. So you're play all of a sudden, don't they got an app for that? Say what now? Don't they got an app for that? No, they don't they have, have an app. They have an actor for that. I need oh. you to come by and act like you have a play. Come play the contract. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I got a separate rate for that. Just oh. so you know. It can't be more than the rate that you get for your film, so I'll take uh. that one. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, so, but are you too busy? Like, if you need to paint your kitchen, are you the guy or are you too busy now? I'm too busy. Yeah, but you yeah. could. I did in the past. I did in the past, for sure. See, I we used to always that. paint because, of course, you know, growing up, we couldn't afford painters. Right. So you became yeah. the paint mm-hmm. guys. You Absolutely. know what I'm saying? So now that I can, you know, like, okay, we got somebody that's remodeling our kitchen. Right. But I'm still there, like, you know, because I know it. Yeah. 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 You know sure. what I'm saying? Because because I really for know sure. it. So not only that's were you an architect, yeah. you were a hidden contractor. <laughs> you know yes. what I'm saying? So when and, does your uh, your home and garden TV show start? <laughs> you know, it's, it's it's funny because I would love to do something like that. When I was actually filming The Intruder, mm-hmm. uh, we were renovating our house. And I was very actively involved. Like, it was like I was <laughs> reliving my architecture days. Yeah, I can imagine. I could tell the architect was like this. I got it. Yeah. yeah. You know I mean? This isn't your job. So Are you going to set today, Back sir? Up. Are All you right. going to set today? You know today? what I mean? And <laughs> even the contractor was like, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. I got the blueprint. I'll talk right here. To you're all, I'll I can talk see yeah, you like, like, load Let me see this right, right here. here. <laughs> I, was, I, was, oh. I was asking all kinds of questions. <laughs> I was that wall's not day. to size. Like, you know what I mean? That's you a start sharp to turn reach, on that wall when you say <laughs> you, you start to reach, realize that at a certain point, they really do want you not there. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. I mean? and it's like, Please yeah, leave. okay, well, uh, <laughs> Mm-hmm. You you got don't you have some like, you got they, the audition set or something they, they only available on your like shoot that? days yeah. like yeah I'm on set <laughs> Thursday ah Thursday that's the day we got to paint they're going home like this Michael Ely guy yeah, yeah. Here. Right. 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 you don't even get it as soon as you come on they turn the TV off like ah oh, this guy <laughs> totally but I learned that you know like I because we, we had looked at other houses to try and buy and I was so happy after filming this movie that we actually were building our own home <laughs> and not like. <laughs> Not mm-hmm. buying it from some stranger who we know nothing about. It doesn't scare about. you to do a movie like The Intruder and then be in this house. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's no. That's why I think you should watch it in theaters because uh, mm. watching it at home might. Eh. Yeah, yeah, okay. It could be a little <laughs> too dark. Yeah, yeah, all right. It could be a little too dark. 
Yeah. Okay. Now, I'm going to watch it at your house then. Leave, cool. leave all the bad vibes there. <laughs> Michael, who's the most famous celebrity actress who has said they had a crush on you? Were you just like, whoa? He's smirking. <laughs> He's smirking. Mm-hmm. Hey, dude, he's you know really answer? in his head right you now. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just, just answer you me write down this the list? without like, yes or no. Is me in trouble? Just without the yes or no. Just yes or no, not who it is. There Have is, you ever had... Is. Okay. Absolutely no way I can answer that without incriminating myself. Right, or incriminating oh, really? them. Really? Or them. We yeah. have a different method, though. What about yeah. this, man? Yeah, don't say it. Mm-hmm. Write it down. Don't say it. I'll, I'll say it. You write it down, then oh, I'll say it. So oh, that way so it's put like, it on paper. Then we, <laughs> what are you talking we're gonna about? Because that yeah. I, got a, I got a candle over here. We'll I'll set it. that thing on fire as soon as you finish. <laughs> did he just get stuck on a question? <laughs> I think I did get yeah. stuck on a question. Hey, ma'am. I, he's I sweating now? My attorney on yes or no. Has there been someone famous that's whispered something crazy in your ear that you were like, wow, that was a lot? Mm-hmm. What'd they say? <laughs> and who was it? No, you, yeah, you don't say when who was, was it. But like, what was it? Was it like it, room four twenty nine? It, it there's been some. I can imagine it's yeah, been a lot. It, it's it's happened. It's happened for sure. And the timing in which it's happened is also interesting mm. as well. Because they were married. Yeah, you, you know. Look, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so man. You have to kind of, and the only oh, reason geez. I can ask you questions like this mm-hmm. is because I know, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying. It's happened to me. Oh, right. You know what I'm saying. So you like we looking at each other. Mm-hmm. We like you want to write yours down now. Um, you wouldn't know any of them. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know what I'm saying. Famous. This is Maria de la Barrio <laughs> from right. what city was she from? Like <laughs> dressing up as fucking Santa Claus. She Pico won't Rivera. Stop yeah, from Pico you. Rivera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like, like, yeah, like mine. I get it, but it's not like. You know what right, I mean? Right, I've been yeah, doing radio right. for a long time. Mm-hmm. Oh, I haven't had one person that came in and hit on me in the wrong way. That's not true. Oh, well, I was going to say Sierra. Remember she invited you to her room? Yeah, Sierra invited me to her room. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she okay. invited me to her room. Real talk. Okay. It was, it was She wanted me to listen to her album. It was other people there. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It was it was, a, it was kind of like a listening party and like yeah, more of like a suite. You know what I'm saying? More of like more a suite. There. But when you narrow it down, you know, she invited me to a room. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I get. I see how that make you feel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. yeah, you you, yeah. you know how it is. Oh, totally. You, have you ever been asked to be in a threesome? Mm-hmm. Yeah, a foursome. Yeah. What what about He's this? Like, Y'all know have, have you ever had a guy that wanted you to smash his girl? That's happened to me. That's a yes. Mm-hmm. His answer yeah. is a yes. Yeah, man. I was like, "Are you <laughs> I'm serious?" Reading him. I'm like, "It was it, my girl yeah. loves you," and I was like, what "The f- what was that movie with Robert Redford and Demi Moore?" In uh, oh, indecent proposal. proposal. Yeah. With Woody yeah. Harrelson, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Has yeah. someone p- offered to pay you for that? No. Oh, okay. No. No. No, it would have happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on how many years it. ago. You know what I'm saying? It depends on how many years ago. All right. <laughs> like, yeah, okay. baby, I got to go over here and act. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Right. This is way babe. before you. This yeah. is way before you. <laughs> what kind of dad is Michael Ely? Oh, man. Um, okay. Uh-oh. So I'm trying to. He thought about that. I'm mm-hmm. trying to definitely okay. find myself as a father because, uh, you know, Listen, let, I'll be straight up. Being an actor can require a, a, a huge amount of selfishness. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it just does. And so the first things kids, the first thing kids teach you is how to be selfless, mm-hmm. how to be patient, and all of those things. And um, I, I, I am now still trying to find a way to like get my work done and still make time for, for my kids. Mm -hmm. And it's harder now that we moved into this house and it's like, I think I'm in my office and my daughter just knocks on the door (laughs) and it's like a glass door and I see her and I don't want to work anymore. (laughs) Right. I hear you. I hear you. I don't want to work anymore. Like it's, it's not like I'm annoyed. I'm like, Ooh, I'd rather do that. Yeah. Like, so my, my, they, they tend to pull the best out of me. Um, they teach me things every single day mm. and I find that I'm trying to become, my father was an amazing father. Mm. I'm trying to be a better father than him. I already know I'm a better father wow. than my father. Yeah. I already know. How do you know, yeah. babe? Because my dad wasn't there. So oh. just, just yeah. being there, you know what I'm saying? Being there, being just there. Just going is... home today. I'm like, boom, I'm, I'm better than my dad. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Got you. Yeah. <laughs> Dun, dun, dun. Uh-huh. I like to thank the academy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Give me a medal. Just but it's, him. <laughs> it's one of those things where you, you know, like, I haven't, shockingly, I have not had to spank my kids. I heard that. Um, I, I think 
my wife says, give him the Carter face. You know what I mean? Because, <laughs> you know, you just like a character from a movie that scares the shit out of you. Like, she's right. like <laughs> just you know, look at him. Look at him that way and, it, and it'll work. And so it, it's one of those things where I'm trying to kind of learn from mistakes and trying not to um, do the same things I've done. I just had this conversation recently, and I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on this. At what point do we as black people burden our kids by teaching them about racism too soon? Mm. So I'll get books for my kids that have like the Jackie mm. Robinson story mm. and Martin yeah. Luther King mm-hmm. story. And in that book it may seem harmless because it's a five year old book, but in that book is oppression. Yeah. So it's like, are we to a certain extent burdening our kids? with oppression before we teach them about pride mm. you know should we so teach them about pride Very interesting. first before we teach them I, about i, the I would oppression think part. if it if it is one it's pride right mm-hmm. and that that's early on in our sponge years as well yeah. you know what i'm saying but with my kids my kids are black and mexican mm-hmm. so i have to really teach them about the real kings and queens that they are. And then when you do go to school, what your history teaches you as Mm -hmm. opposed to what your history is. We're not just slaves and we're not just, Mm -hmm. you know, the one name of Martin Luther King. So I had to go, I had to go levels, but with that, with the dialogue with your kids as well Mm -hmm. and understanding how intelligent our kids really are Mm -hmm. at three and five and mm-hmm. seven and so and, but i think that they could bring they could soak in the information a little bit better and where it's coming from mm-hmm. when you teach them how the kings and the queens and who they are right. and then what this particular thing in this book about oppression is because my kids ask a lot of questions yeah and i find myself having to have a lot of dialogue with them but i would rather that they have the knowledge of self Early on, as opposed to when they get 15, 16, 17, and then I'm trying to teach them, mm-hmm. you know, because there was a lot growing up that we did pos- probably didn't know, Michael, mm-hmm. until we got older. Mm-hmm. And then we started picking up books and started mm-hmm. learning so on and so forth. Not that our, our mothers or fathers didn't teach us. It's just that at the time. They probably didn't bring it home. They were working too hard. They, you know, maybe they didn't want to burden us with with the oppression, but. We found those books or those, that knowledge, mm-hmm. and I think the earl with my kids, they they're receiving that much earlier mm-hmm. than I did. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I I just for for you know, and, and my kids are black and Afghan, mm-hmm. so you know it's it's one of those things where you know <laughs> a black Muslim is like, okay, so you got the world against you. Yeah. Now what 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 are you gonna do about that? Well, I think. Where I'm at now is I think it's very important to teach them first, first, that they were kings and queens. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that knowledge of self. Yeah. And then and then they can learn about the other part a little bit later so that it's not you starting off with being behind, Mm -hmm. if you will, or being less than. Right. I I think that that's that's where the kind of that's what I'm struggling with as, as a father right now is trying to. Try to like at what point mm-hmm. do you kind of start? Out. Out? Yeah, for to be so now. aware, and your children are already are only just six and two. That's mm-hmm. really great too. You're already thinking of it so far, and not so far in advance, but you're already thinking about that now. Yeah, I think that's good. Well, I, yeah, I was reading a book about Jackie Robinson, and to my son, thinking, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna teach my son about Jackie Robinson." Right. Yeah, and then I realized I, halfway through, I'm like, "Oh no, okay." Yeah. Uh, Give me uh, where the wild things are. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> where the let, wild let, let, are. let me soak this up first. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then it's our presentation as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know and what I'm saying? And then you start reading a book like Where the Wild Things Are, and you're like, well, wait a minute. This kid goes and starts taming the wild things. Mm-hmm. And then it starts, to, and then you start thinking, <laughs> oh, man, is every book like, yeah. you're like, like how many just bring stories? It how many you stories think are. Our kids are learning something for the first time. Mm-hmm. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, there's some things that we just think that they know, right? Like, or or we, we like we just know we we know, but our kids are learning things for the first time. Yeah. I just stopped. My son used to like the Bar- was it Berenstein Bears? Bears. I just oh, yo man, stop, stop. <laughs> Why is the mom got this thing on her head and she always wearing a house coat and she didn't yeah. do anything? See what I'm saying? Like it's so antiquated. <laughs> it's, and it's so behind. It's crazy how <laughs> we find like, that now. I was like, huh? I was like, I was like, I was like I was, 
I don't want to read this one. Can I just <laughs> tell you? I don't read this one. Next book. I, next I book. grew up on Disney movies <laughs> from the beginning. All the princesses and pretty and the guy's going to come save me. The first Disney princess that I truly identified with was Belle because she didn't need to be saved. She mm -hmm. went and saved the beast. Mm -hmm. She was the one that went out and looked after her father. And it was the first time that I was like, wait, we don't have to always be saved and always be waiting How for this How old were you? Uh, I would have to look back at what year that was out, but I remember sitting in the theater with my dad and watching it and being like, Belle's my girl. Like, yeah. that's who I want to be like. I want to be the heroine, hey, not just... I just love Cinderella because she talked to the animals. And <laughs> <Hey, laughs> Michael Eady, you can walk on any set, any movie, something you're working on now, previous, but this is the hardest work that you'll ever have to do with mm -hmm. us raising human beings. You know what I'm saying? Especially when you give a damn about it. Unequivocally. I mean, it, there's no, this huh? is definitely the most <laughs> difficult job ever. That's mm -hmm. also the most rewarding. Yes, yes, sir. You know, it it really is. It's the most rewarding because, you know, when you're when you when my daughter says, uh, I came back from doing some promo tour and stuff in in New York or something, and when I came back, you know, she she jumped in my arms and hugged me, mm -hmm. and she's two and a half, and it's mm -hmm. like, like that alone, I was like, see, I. I don't. I almost didn't care what the movie did. Again. Yeah, like, yes, sir. Like, this it is just like, took this is out it. of it. Mm -hmm. Like she, she loves me no matter what. Mm -hmm. No matter what, you know. And she, she does like you know cookies. And yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Michael, what advice would you give your younger self? Probably, um, just know that you cannot be destination oriented mm. live in the journey that's where life is it's in the journey if you're worried about getting to a certain level it's kind of small thinking because everybody you can set goals don't get me wrong you can set goals and try to you know reach those goals but just know that the struggle is where you're going to do the most living. Mm -hmm. The struggle to get to that goal is where you're going to do the most living. Because once you get to that goal, then there's always going to be a new goal. Like it's same thing like with money, right? Like people say, oh, once I make a certain amount of money, I'm right. good. And it's like, no, because then there's going to be somebody with 10 times as much yeah, money yeah. as you. And there's going to be somebody who's, there's always going to be somebody who has more of mm -hmm. whatever it is that you try to attain. But nobody can take away or pay for those little life experiences that quite honestly fill your heart, fill your soul, help you get through your day. Mm -hmm. um, and those struggles, you know, I, I don't look at failure as such. Mm. Right? I don't look at failure as such. It's If you try, as long as you try, you're living. Yep. Thank you for coming into the neighborhood, man, and hanging out with us, man. Are you are you one of the Currys or are the Currys the Ely? No. Okay, just checking. Do you play basketball? Just checking. All right, no, but thank you for coming thank into you, the neighborhood, you. man. The thank Intruder you. is available, man. Make sure we all get out there. Yeah, Make sure we all out. see that, bro. And I had a great time sitting down mm -hmm. with you. Absolutely, man. Thank you, man. Our pleasure, man. Michael Ely in the neighborhood, Big Boy's Big Neighborhood. Boy.